Hi, I'm Brent. You're watching Steam Culture. Welcome to our first time viewers. Welcome back to our long time viewers. Well, it's the day after Thanksgiving. Happy post Thanksgiving. One of the things we're thankful for is our first responders. And in this particular episode, we're talking about the firefighter. Well, not the firefighter directly. We're talking about the tool of the trade of the firefighter, the fire engine. Now, the predecessor to these awesome fire engines that we see going down the road and that I idolized as a child was the steam powered fire engine. And uh, there's a great museum in Jeffersonville, Indiana. We shot a really good episode a few years ago and we thought, let's, let's show that again because you're gonna learn something about the fire engine that you probably hadn't learned before. And if you do know about this, you're gonna enjoy it because it's super cool. So enjoy the episode. I'll see you next Friday. Okay, we're inside the Vintage Fire Museum and I'm here with Kurt Peters. He is the board chair and he's gonna tell us a little bit about these uh, fire engines. Now, this is called a steamer, correct? Correct. Okay, awesome. Why don't you tell us about the steamer? All right, a steamer uses fire to fight fire. And of course, they knew how steam engines could propel boats on the rivers and was used in the very early locomotives. And somebody came up with the brilliant idea of why not use steam power to pump water? So the water, of course, that goes on the fire is different from the water that's in the boiler. Now here we have an 1875 beautiful steamer and Clappin' Jones fourth size. It'll pump about 500 gallons a minute, maybe a little more. Quite a remarkable thing because the best hand pumpers were usually only pumping about 200 gallons a minute. Okay, so the first thing I thought of when I saw this piece of machinery was, these things don't come up to steam that quick. So if you have a fire and we don't have that much time, how on earth did they go from a cold boiler to being ready to put out a fire? Excellent question. Well, first of all, they would have a piping system that would connect the pipes in this boiler to the heating system in the firehouse or to a water heating mm -hmm. system in the firehouse. Mm -hmm. And the water would be pumped through continuously, not at steam level, but it would be hot. Then when the alarm came in, this would be ready back here for igniting a fire under the boiler. And you'd have coals at the bottom, then some wooden kindling, and then maybe even a kerosene rope soaked rag on top of that. And that would bring this very quickly from hot to steam level. By the time they were at the fire, uh, you'd have really a, a strong uh, steam power, no doubt about it. So they're using also the time that they are heading to the fire to build up yes. steam pressure. Yes. Now, and you would have somebody here in the back. Uh huh. We can, and that person has another job, by the way. Here's the brake system for this. So he would control the brakes also for that. So you've got a, a boiler flying down the road, pulled by horses, it's probably good to have a brake system. On yeah, you got that right. <laughs> All right, thanks to my friend Kurt for walking us through the steamer. Probably something you didn't know about before, but now you know how we used fire and steam to put out fires. I want to tell you about something else. We're going to have a click-through link here on the screen that will bring you through to the Vintage Fire Museum's website where you can see pictures, you can uh, schedule a tour, or you can also find this book, The Magnificent Old Steam Fire Engines, a great historical walk through these great pieces of machinery. Well, thanks for joining me this week on Steam Culture. Come find us on social media because we're everywhere and join us next Friday for our next episode. I'll see you then. <music>